Please rise. Court is now in session. I strenuously object. A legal podcast brought to you by the Pittsburgh law firm of Flaherty Fardo is now in session. All those seeking information about the law and legal matters affecting the people of Pittsburgh and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, half-baked opinions, and a dose of self-indulgence are invited to attend and participate. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! The defense strenuously objects. You would! Call the first witness. Welcome to I Strenuously Object. I am Bill Rogel, partner in the law firm Flaherty, Fardo, Rogel, and Amick. Uh, joining us as well, the queen of tax appeals herself, Her Majesty Nicole Helpman Amick, uh, also a partner in the aforesaid Flaherty, Fardo, Rogel, and Amick. Nicole, how you doing? Good morning, Bill. So we're going to break some news here. Uh, it's a case that we handled. The, the, the breaking news is mostly maintenance of what we thought the status quo was, and but a, a real a real bullet that the taxpayers dodged here. So to do this, I'm going to have to give you a little bit of background. All names have been changed to protect the innocent. Um, but we were involved in a case where we, we, we filed a tax appeal. Heck, it may have been a school district appeal back in 2021. I think it was a school district appeal. It carried over into 2022. There was a, a decision at the Board of Property Assessment Appeals and Review that got appealed to the Board of Viewers level. Uh, in early, I believe it was February of 2022, we reached a settlement in front of the Board of Viewers. That settlement's fixed and assessed value for our client's property for both 2021 and 2022, uh, even though the decision itself was made in February of 2022. This was, you know, after the like the lawsuit itself was filed, but before all the real nuts and bolts and kind of crazy things went on with the common level ratio for, for 2022, including court orders and injunctions and appellate procedure and everything else. So at that point, the CLR for that year was still 81.1%. 81.1%. And on that basis and with that number in mind, this case settled. Now, we're not going to disclose our client's name. I'm not here to put the school district or the school district's attorney on blast. Nothing like that, right? Um, obviously, later in 2022, everything changes. The, the CLR for 2022 changes in a way that, you know, mostly got solidified all the way into 2023. And as you, loyal listener and property tax aficionado may remember, county council ended up passing an ordinance that opened up a special appeals period where people were allowed in the first quarter of 2023 to appeal their 2022 tax assessment, kind of go back in time as if they had appealed it back then, um, based upon the new CLR figure, uh, which was, Nicole? 63.5%. Um, I'm only in the ballpark on this stuff, so I'm glad you're here to make sure that I give accurate information. Initially, they opened up that appeals window, and the BPAR itself, the, the county administrative office that handles these appeals, started trying to not accept appeals for people who had already reached a resolution, already appealed and reached a resolution the prior year. And county council said, well, no, that's not our intent. Uh, and they passed, they, they passed another ordinance clarifying the first ordinance. So the first one was in January. The second was in June or July of 2023, where they're saying, no, no, no. The whole point here is to let people who already had appeals still be able to appeal. So it clarified this special appeals period that we opened up specifically is intended to apply to all properties, irrespective of whether they had already had an appeal, had a pending appeal, already had a determination, reached a settlement or anything else. So fast forward a couple months and we had a school district file a petition with the court under the old case number, because again, it went to the board of viewers and basically they were seeking an injunction from the court that would stop the county, uh, the, the board of property assessment appeals and review from issuing a decision regarding regarding 2022 um, because that had already been settled and decided. And so what this was essentially doing was the school was asking the court to come in and say the settlement that was reached back in February of 2022 cannot be disturbed by a subsequent act of county council. And that settlement has to remain valid. The county, who, by the way, is a party to this settlement, cannot come in by an act of legislation and essentially overrule a court order, right? Because these settlements, in addition to being agreed to by the parties, are signed off on by the court. It was a non-trivial kind of legal issue, but it was essentially asking the court to completely invalidate like the most 
significant places where this ordinance that opened the special appeal period worked, right? Um, everyone is entitled to file those appeals, but the people who were most clearly aggrieved by the old CLR are the people who had that old CLR applied to actually set their their property tax figure. And those were the people who were involved in cases that settled or reached a resolution in 2022 uh, prior to knowing the CLR was going to change and prior to uh, the appeal period being opened up by the county. So long story short, you know, the, the case was heard by by Judge Hertzberg or the, uh, the motion was heard by Judge Hertzberg, who was the one who had been um, rendering decisions on the underlying case that, that reset the, the CLR and decided that the county was engaged in wrongdoing. And Judge Hertzberg sided with the property owners here, right, that these property owners were aggrieved by that old CLR. And the thing to remember here is this is a remedial uh, act by Allegheny County Council, by which I mean the, the underlying case that Judge Hertzberg heard found that the county had been submit, submitting systematically incorrect information that then had the state calculating the CLR at an inflated number that resulted in across the board over assessment um, of properties that were that were assessed in the year subject to that appeal. And this kind of systematic uh, overtaxation based upon improperly submitted and improperly uh, kind of called evidence to the state, uh, Judge Hertzberg himself in the original appeal started talking about it in these constitutional terms, right? That it's a, a constitutional violation um, to subject property owners to an, an inaccurate uh, and ultimately like uh, obtained by way of systematic violations of statutes and laws uh, by the county. And the only way the county could fix this, right, the county itself decided, got together to say, well, we have to fix this, right? We messed up and these property owners are paying taxes that are too high and they created the special appeal window. And the court sided with the property owners having had their rights aggrieved over separation of powers concerns um, as far as whether or not those those court decisions could be appealed. So uh, what's the outgrowth of this, Nicole? I mean, where does this leave us? Well, I think that the school district is trying to cut their losses. And by filing that motion, they were trying to prevent property owners who had artificially high assessment values from being able to appeal again, because they're worried about the loss of revenue. Now, this is across large commercial buildings. I mean, there's a lot of cases, I think, that had new appeals filed for 2022. So my guess is, uh, because I spoke with a lot of other property appeal attorneys, no one else was dealing with this motion. I think they picked a case, wanted to see what happened, um, and were trying to restrict property owners from exercising that new appeal window for 2022. Like you said, those were the most aggrieved parties because they were the ones that had been subjected specifically to the wrong ratio. Now, at the time, we didn't know it was the wrong ratio, but subsequently, we did find that out. So... Uh, it was an interesting motion. I was very surprised to see it because only one office is filing these types of motions. Uh, they have since indicated that they will not be filing any more motions, and that should be the end of that issue. So hopefully that's true. Other attorney offices that are other solicitors for different school districts and boroughs have accepted the fact that these property owners are permitted by county council to file new 2022 appeals. So no one else has raised any issues with that. Um, so hopefully that will be the end of this issue and all the property owners will be given their rights as Allegheny County Council intended to file these new 2022 appeals. And I'm hoping that there's no other issues related to that. Yeah. And I mean, look, we've talked about this. We have, we have no idea why why this specific client, this specific property owner was the one that this specific school district chose to be the one where they tried to to file this motion and get the board to not consider their appeal. Like, I mean, it seems completely arbitrary. There is nothing that stands out about this case, these facts or whatever that, that, that make reasonable to me why why this property and not one of the thousands of others that are similarly situated was chosen for this single motion. But if the school district had been successful, if the court agreed and said, that's right, we're going to we're going to quash that appeal, we're going to instruct BPAR not to give a new figure um, for, for 2022. Uh, I can promise you there would have been hundreds or thousands more of this kind of motion filed uh, to quash all the similarly situated appeals because the considerations would have been the same. There was nothing sufficiently unique where if this had been granted, it would have really opened the floodgates and you know, undid a lot of the work that county council did in creating the special appeals period in the first place. 
<laughs> I guess this is kind of a quick victory lap, right? I don't know why they picked a case, uh, but we argued it and we won. And our appeals are going to be able to go forward. And, you know, it was just one case. You know, the school districts didn't file hundreds and lose hundreds. But the implications, if we had lost, beyond just what it would have meant to that specific client, were were pretty astronomical. So, you know, hundreds, thousands of Allegheny County pro taxpayers, uh, you know, including ones we represent and including ones we don't represent, um, you know, really benefited by this outcome. So, you know, if you want if you want to send us your thanks or, you know, some you know, remuneration for, uh, for, for a job well done. We'll certainly accept that, but uh, no, uh, I, I, you know, I'm not, we're not here to demand anyone's specific thanks or adulation just to let you know, um, you know, this was a thing that was potentially out there. And, uh, you know, we are glad that, you know, the courts and the, the county council have, have worked in concert here to make sure property owners have the ability to have their assessments decided based on, you know, the, the correct, CLR using the actual information that legally the county was required to submit in the first place. Yeah, that's a good thing. Honestly, I think that they picked this case because it was a residential property, not a commercial property. And um, when you start dealing with large commercial properties, there's a lot of money. So they'll spend a lot of money to defend their right to potentially save, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for 2022. So I think they picked a random residential case that maybe they thought no one would do anything on. Um, obviously they were wrong in that. And, um, the fact that we were successful in making that argument, which was the correct argument, that's specifically what Allegheny County Council stated, uh, in various ways. So I think it was a win and, um, you know, I'm really happy that Judge Hertzberg had the case because obviously he's familiar with all the issues as well. It was just interesting to me that they even tried to do that. I guess I get why they tried to do it, but I think Judge Hertzberg definitely made the right decision. All right. Thank you for joining us for what seems to have been a, a genuinely brief episode of I Strenuously Object. Please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Uh, tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell whoever you can to check us out. If you have questions, whether it's for our mailing it in segment or any feedback whatsoever for the podcast, you can email us. That's I object at pghfirm.com. We are on Instagram at I Strenuously Object Podcast. And for more information on property tax appeals, 2024 appeals in particular. Um, if you want to have your case reviewed for free, you can visit Flaherty Fardo, Rogel and Amix website at pdhfirm.com. So until next time, some parting advice. Hi, my Yorkshire Terrier has chewed up the legs on my kitchen table. Is there a cheap way to repair that? Take a walnut and rub it into the legs of your table. That'll mask the scratches. Next thing you want to do is ditch the terrier and get yourself a proper dog. Any dog under 50 pounds is a cat and cats are pointless.